Hi everyone, welcome back to the 2024 Baking Challenge. It is week number 46 and we are making apple butter, apple galette. I really got addicted to galettes. I don't know if you were here for the summer months, but we made a savory zucchini and it had a buttery flaky crust and it was just packed with vegetables fresh from the garden and a ton of flavor. This one is gonna be a fantastic fall cozy take on that. So we've got spiced apple butter, we've got those thin sliced apples um, packed full of flavor and I feel like it's perfect for November. Now, if you weren't here during the summer months, you missed my little history lesson on the galette. It is a French inspired tart. You can fill it with savory, you can fill it with sweet, it's like a free form shape. So sometimes it can get a little messy, but the rustic nature of it, I think it's just beautiful. So I'm looking forward to making another one. I've been really wanting to make another one and having a sweet version this time is really exciting for me. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. Let's go over our ingredients. You're gonna need flour, butter, salt, apple butter, which you can make if you'd like to. I chose not to. I have a limited amount of time these days, so we got ours from Eckert's, which if you're in the St. Louis area, Illinois, you know who Eckert's is. It's good apple butter. We also have a ton of apple cider from there, but totally worth it, it's amazing. You're gonna need a couple of fresh apples, cinnamon, sugar, and a bit of cream for brushing. I'm going to link the full recipe. Um, it's gonna be on the blog below. So grab your ingredients, make sure you've got everything, and let's get our crust made. I've elected to weigh the flour instead of measuring it, so I have my handy food scale out here. Make sure it's set to grams. We are going to do one cup or 113 grams of wheat flour. If you put your bowl on after you started your uh, scale, make sure that you cancel it out so it's set at zero. And we're just gonna go till we get 113 grams. And honestly, we're only adding another half a cup of flour on top of here, so I'm using just a small bowl. That's 103. It honestly doesn't take much. It's 107, 111. Here's where I get real, there we go, 113. And then I'm going to zero it out and I'm gonna add 60 grams of all-purpose flour. Forty-five, fifty-four. Getting there, 59, 60, 59. <laughs> there we go, 60 on the dot. You're gonna need a pastry cutter for this, pastry mixer, pastry cutter, whatever you wanna call it, make sure you have one of these because again, this is a pie crust. We're gonna be working with cold butter. You're gonna cube your butter, dice it before we go mixing it, but this is gonna make your life a lot easier and kind of give your mixer a little bit more life as well. So this is great. So I didn't actually have any sour cream. Thank goodness my neighbor was running to the store and brought some back for me. There are alternatives to sour cream. The one that I can think of off the top of my head is cottage cheese. You have to add a little bit of milk and maybe some lemon juice and get it mixed really well. Consult your Google or Alexa because there's a list of things. So we've got six tablespoons of sour cream. That's one, two, three, goodness gracious. Four, five, six. I am doing heaping tablespoons because as you'll see, some of it's just gonna get stuck in there. You can measure it out if you want. It's 85 grams of sour cream. And then, oh gosh, I made a mess. 
And then we're gonna add our 12 tablespoons of cold butter, okay? So teeny tiny cubes of butter, very cold, fresh out of the fridge, and in we go. You can use your hands to do this if you want. I hate that, I hate butter on my hands, so pastry cutter it is. First, I'm gonna mix this all around, get my butter coated in the flour, and then I'm going to start pressing down. And you're gonna mix this until you have mostly a cohesive dough. There's gonna be a little bit of dry stuff in the bottom. That's okay, you'll be able to scoop that out after um, you have most of it together, okay? Have a spatula handy. A lot of times with this, you're gonna have to kind of scrape it out. Um, I like when there is sour cream added to a pastry crust. I'll turn this around here. That's why the little thumb notch is there. I feel like it gives it a kick. Um, gives the flavor just a little something extra. So you're gonna mix this up and then we're going to wrap the disc. We're gonna form it into a disc on plastic wrap about two inches thick, I believe. Yeah, two inches thick, crack-free disc, okay? You don't want any cracks in it. That's gonna just make it all kinds of messy when we go to roll it out later. So I'll show you how to wrap it here in a little bit. This is gonna take me a while to work. All right, I put gloves on because I am gonna to have to get in here with my hands. So, I and I have a boo-boo on. I have a Band-Aid on, one of the cats got me today. So what we're doing here is we are stirring the large clumps of dough and then we're gonna use our hands to gently knead and squeeze the dough together until you have, like I said, that cohesive mass. So I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I just wanted to say that you can use your hands. It's actually encouraged in the recipe. Um, you know what, even if I didn't have a Band-Aid on my hand, I probably would still be wearing gloves because this is not my favorite thing here. Um, something about the greasiness of butter just really bothers me. I'm gonna pick up all of my spots here though, my dry spots. So there's actually no dry ingredients left in my bowl. This is a cohesive dough. There's lots of chunks of butter still. Um, so, all right. Now we're going to get out your plastic wrap. We're going to make a round circle out of this. If you are using your hands to do this and it starts to get really, really wet, um, stick it in the fridge for a couple minutes. Throw it in the fridge for 10 minutes. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, the warmth of your hands really starts melting that dough and then you have to work super fast. All right, I don't have any cracks in mine. That's about two inches. It's starting to get messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it wrapped. Wrap it tightly. This is going to go into the refrigerator until it's firm, at least 90 minutes. You can put it in the fridge for up to 48 hours, okay? I'll see you back when it's time to get the apples made. As you can tell, it is definitely not the same day that I recorded the first part. Um, <laughs> but that's okay. What you're gonna do is you are either going to use apple butter that you bought, which is my case, or you can make your own apple butter. I'm gonna walk you through it. I'm not gonna show you how because I don't have time for that. <laughs> a cup and a half of applesauce, they say unsweetened. Um, I don't know that it matters all that much. Two and two tablespoons of dark brown sugar or light brown sugar. When you're measuring brown sugar, Make sure that you're packing it tightly. I don't know one recipe that doesn't call for that, okay? A half a teaspoon of cinnamon, which in my opinion is not enough, but you know how I feel about cinnamon. A fourth a teaspoon of salt, and this is optional. You could go with um, one teaspoon of boiled cider. I tried to make boiled cider one time. It did not turn out well. <laughs> 
You can buy it. You can buy it online. You can buy it in some stores. My local grocery store did not have that. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your applesauce, your brown sugar, your cinnamon, and your salt, and you're going to put that all in a saucepan. You're going to bring that to a simmer over medium heat, uh, and then you're going to cook. You have to stir it frequently about um, 18 minutes. Okay. When you're done with that, you're going to remove it from the heat, uh, stir in your boiled cider if you're using some, and then you're going to put that in like a liquid measuring cup or a small bowl to cool completely. Okay. Um, the measurements I gave you should make about three fourths of a cup of um, apple butter. So there you have it and there you are. Next up, we need to peel, core, and slice apples. I'm going to cheat. I'll show you what I mean. This. This is the KitchenAid Spiralizer with peel, core, and slice. Now, I love this thing. I use this thing so much. I love it because uh, we make a lot of zoodles, noodles out of zucchini. And the easiest way to do that is with this. You've got a peeler here, you've got your core here, and you have slicer. This is a, one of the slicers. And then you have two different sizes of this and then two different sizes of like a, they call them the spiralizer. So that is what makes your thin strips of noodles. You just put this into your attachment dock and wash your fruit, stick your fruit on the skewer here, move this sucker back and forth, and then put your KitchenAid on low and let it do the work for you. That's what I'm gonna go do. If you don't have one of these, you can pick them up on Amazon. Oop, I will drop a link below. Um, if you don't have one of these and you don't want one of these, that's fine too. You're going to want to peel, core, and slice your apples to about one eighth of an inch. The recipe says uh, five and a half cups of apples, which is about three medium apples. So get that done, and then we're gonna come back and make our filling. Try to do this one-handed, just so that you can see how this works. So you cut the bottom off of your fruit, you put it on the skewer, the peeler goes down below, the core is right here, and the slicer is right there. So this is the track. You put a bowl or a plate underneath, and then you just move this little lever here, kind of push it into place. I think I pushed it a little too far. As your mixer turns, that is going to turn also. You want to keep it on a low speed. Now mine is bouncing because I don't think I've got it in there all the way, so I'm just going to hold it steady, and there you go. As you can see, we're peeling, we're coring, we are slicing. Well, spiralizing, but those spirals are slices, so. Okay, you should have your apples cored, peeled, and sliced. Mine are a little on the thick side. Also, um, apple choice. Let's talk apple choice real fast. I used galas today. I'm not making that whole Granny Smith mistake. Um, Obviously, your baking apples are going to hold their form a little bit better and they're going to be tart, okay? I went with something sweet. I want something sweet. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to throw a little bit more brown sugar in here because I think I have an awful lot of apples. So, um, and I'm in the mood for comfort sugar. So sue me. So in your bowl with your apple slices, you're going to drop uh, about half a lemon, which is lemon juice. And sorry, you're not going to put the lemon in there. Juice from half a lemon or, you know, which I've already added some. I'm going to add just a little bit more. That keeps your apples from turning brown. It kind of counteracts the sweetness. So you're going to toss those with your tablespoon of brown sugar, or in my case, like double everything so <laughs> all right you're gonna make sure you get all those apples covered and then you're just gonna set those aside preheat the oven to 425 you're gonna want the rack in the middle okay okay um, I'm trying to remember if I had trouble transferring this last time and I just rolled it out on parchment paper which I think sounds about right. 
So you're going to pull your pastry out of the oven. You're going to want it to sit out for five to 10 minutes to get a little on the soft side, especially if like me, it's been in the fridge for a few days. Okay. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go ahead and use the rolling mat for this. I really think last time I did it on the baking sheet on parchment paper, but now I'm starting to second guess myself. You will need some flour because you don't want this sticking. And if you remember, we used a very heavy um, fat ratio. So there's a lot of butter in this pastry and the sour cream also will add to that stickiness. So you are going to want to flour your surface, not your phone, but you know, the surface. The surface of, oh no, what do I have there? Towel fluff. Usually I will try to hang this thing up to dry, but occasionally I just, you know, with the dish towel. <sighs> and of course, because of the nature of the silicone mat, it picks up towel fluff. All right, here we go. I want to say the last galette we made did not use the wheat flour. I don't know if you can see the chunks of butter on here. Um, it's pretty hilarious. Let me just, but yeah, there's like massive chunks of butter. Even though I was quite sure that I had worked it all out, clearly I had not. All right, the reason I love this particular um, silicone mat is because it does have the rings as well as the, um, the ruler on the side. Whew, yeah, this is gonna be, this is gonna be a bit. <laughs> okay. And remember, it said it's gonna be about an inch thick and we are supposed to rotate and flip as we go. So. And it's gonna be a 12 to 13 inch circle by the time we're done. Add a little bit more flour to this. Flour as needed so it's not sticking. Obviously, you don't want to over flour at the same time. Um, so for this mat, it's going to be the outer ring. Make sure you're identifying. And remember, this is not going to be a perfect circle, you guys. This is rustic. These galettes are a rustic shape. So I've almost got mine where it needs to be. Try to smooth my edges out just a little bit more here. Okay, there we go. That is done. If this begins to crack or feel dry, just spritz it with some water. Um, I know a lot of people keep a mister of water in the kitchen. It's a great idea to have if you work with an awful lot of pastry. My pastry is definitely not dry, nor is it cracked. Okay, so next up we're gonna spread out our apple butter, which I forgot to get out of the refrigerator. Um, and you may wanna do this on your baking rack, or on your, um, sorry, on your baking sheet. I'm assuming that we're using a baking sheet. Let me double check that. <sighs> oh. If your dough becomes too sticky, the flour's not cutting it, it's too warm, too pliable, it's starting to rip, put it back in the fridge for a little bit, about five to 10 minutes. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, we are going to do baking sheet and parchment. Let me get that set for this. It is a thing of beauty here. Now, once you have this rolled out, you're going to spread on your apple butter. All right. It's gonna be in a thin, even layer all around the good dough. You're gonna leave a half an inch of the edges because remember the galette, we fold it over. 
So it's going to take a good amount. I love apple butter. I'm happy about this recipe. Um, I'm excited to, okay, this is gonna take a lot of apple butter. <laughs> Maybe I'm making my layer a little too thick. I'll, I'll work on that. It smells so very good that I think I will put some on an English muffin for breakfast this morning because that just sounds delightful to me now that I have a nose full of apple butter. And again, if you've made yours, great. If you've bought yours, awesome. Like we're cutting corners, we're making this easy. Life is not easy, let's try to make this as easy as we can. Okay, I'm just gonna put that back in there. Okay, now we are going to start about two and a half to three inches from the edge of the dough and we're gonna shingle the apples in two or three circles, working from the outside to the center. Now, some of my apples are in pieces. Guys, that's gonna happen. It's just the way it goes. So I'm gonna say about there. And I'm just gonna do the best I can. That's all any of us can do. We're just gonna, we are just gonna do the best we can. I'm gonna get my clean hands right in here. That's, you know, that is what it is. We're just making a go of it however we can, right? I definitely have enough pieces that I can fill in the blanks and just start like dumping it in like an apple pie. I'm not gonna cry about it if this thing isn't pretty because again, galette the, by general nature is a very rustic looking thing. So, yep, I'm just gonna go for it now. The gloves are off and we're just, we're just in it to win it now. I'm gonna get all of my apple pieces on here any way that I can. <laughs> and I'm okay with this. You should be okay with this too. Life is not about perfection. It's about having good times with good people and doing the best you can to serve your fellow man. And don't be a jerk. That's really all life is about. No perfection, no Instagram alternate realities over here. This is going to be messy and I absolutely approve. Now, as you can see, my galette has gotten a little out of hand. <laughs> uh, I may have possibly gone with too many apples. Oh well. Now it says to use kitchen scissors or a sharp knife to cut slits from the edge of the dough towards the start of the apple in three to four inch intervals around. Um, I mean, we could do that or we could just fold it like we did the zucchini one, which is what I'm gonna do here. So that's, seems excessive, but if you want to not have these weird fold over edges on your galette, then go for it. By all means, use the, uh, the slicing method, but I'm, I'm gonna call mine good. You're going to have these overlapping edges no matter what you do. Press them down to kind of seal them somewhat. So you're supposed to put this in the refrigerator while your oven um, preheats. So for at least 15 minutes. Um, mine hasn't, but mine's been in the fridge for quite a few days and it was practically frozen. So you're going to brush your edges with egg white generously. Um, your egg wash should be one egg beaten with one tablespoon of water. And I don't know if you could tell, but I glopped some, uh, some apple butter here in the center just because I can. All right because I make decisions based on whims and I am okay with that in my life. Maybe you're not and that's all right too. The other thing that you are supposed to do is you're supposed to take like a tablespoon of butter 
and drop it, is it is a tablespoon? Yeah, a tablespoon of butter cubed and drop it over the top of the galette. Now, that's kind of the reason why I put the apple butter on there. I don't wanna do that. There's a lot of fat already in this galette. I don't wanna add butter to the top. I don't know why, but my gut instincts are telling me, let's not do that. So once again, I'm going with my gut on this. But by all means, follow the directions to the best of your ability. Or go rogue. I don't care. We're all free to make our own choices here. My choice to add butter or not should not have any bearing on anyone else. Now for my favorite part, the sugar. Got your coarse sugar. I've got my raw sugar cane, my raw cane sugar here, and that goes over everything. That goes over your crust, that goes over your apples. Obviously, I'm gonna add quite a good amount here because I would like a nice, like, crusty crunch to mine. Coarse sparkling sugar is definitely different from the raw cane, and that's okay. Whew, all right, I'd say I went overboard. <laughs> I'm also okay with that. I don't know if you noticed, but I did slide mine onto the parchment paper before I did the fronts and the tops. Into the oven, it's going to go middle rack, 35 to 40 minutes, friends. 35 to 40 minutes, okay? Um, the crust is gonna be a deep brown because we've got that um, wheat flour on there. Your apples are gonna be nice and tender. Once you take it out, you're gonna let it cool on the baking sheet, okay? You can use the parchment paper to transfer it to a cutting board to cut. And then um, we're gonna give this a try. I'm pretty sure it's, sorry, cats are distracting. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be tasty, but I'll see you back in about 45 minutes and we can decide then. It's done. Mine is a little overdone, it happens, but it smells really good um, other than the burned sugar and I am excited to try it. I am glad that I did not put the butter on the top. This is already, so I should probably let this sit a little bit longer, but I have to go to work soon. So um, there was a lot of liquid and my crust is definitely done. It's going to be a, a, a floppy, like there's, there's floppiness to this. Okay, this is really good. That apple butter gives it a zing. My apples are nice and um, soft. There's a little bit of tartness from that lemon. You have the crunch of the sugar on the top. It's not overly sweet, it's not overly tart. This is everything that I wanted out of this, uh, out of this bake today. So. I'm going to call this a winner. This is really, really good. Well, that is it for this week. If you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button below. I put out one of these videos every single Saturday morning. You can also go over to the Facebook page where sometime between Wednesday and Friday, I'm going to put out the name of what we'll be baking and the ingredient list. That way you can decide if you would like to bake along and you have time to get your shopping done. I am happy with how this turned out. I am also looking forward to next week where we are going to start the fall holiday portion of these bakes. If you celebrate Thanksgiving or Friendsgiving, the next two recipes are gonna help you deal with some of those leftovers. So I hope that you will tune in and I will see you next Saturday.